But first, we are talking tonight. Of course we are. It's Super Tuesday about the US presidential election, Donald Trump and his prospects of re-entering the White House. Let's talk to Anthony Scaramucci, a former White House communications director, uh, briefly under Donald Trump during his first time in uh, first term in office. Mr. Scaramucci, great to speak to you tonight. Thank you very much for coming on the program. You're not going to well, mention I got fired, though. Is that because you're like a polite... I, I was Brit? being polite, sir, but thank you for yeah, bringing it. 11 yeah, days, no, was I'm it? Sorry, they probably know I got fired. It's fine. It was a, it's one of the badges of honor. I was going to say, is that now a source of pride? Was it 11 days you served? It was 11 days. Thank you. Because some of you Brits say 10 days. And I sort of <laughs> feel like I've been jipped out of like a That's big a part of my the career. whole time. Yeah, I mean, you know, the 11th day is the one I got fired on, so we can't leave that one out. Do you regret... Let, let's start with that, actually. Do you regret ever having worked for him in the first place? Uh, I regret having worked for him on the campaign. Yes, I have to be totally candid with you about that because I didn't understand at the time the direction he was trying to take the country in. And so uh, some of your viewers and listeners will listen to that and say, oh, that's malarkey. He said really bad things about Mexicans. He said really bad things about that or or this. And, uh, you know, mea culpa, I was wrong to not take that stuff as seriously as I should have. And I think what's fascinating, very few people that have worked for him or have worked on the campaign are willing to admit the mistakes that they made. Uh, but I have to own those mistakes because, you know, I've got five children and I have to have a reckoning with mistakes that I've made in my life to explain to them that, listen, you can make mistakes, you can go forward, uh, but you got to be a man or a woman about these mistakes. You have to own them. And so, yes, I... I regret. I don't re regret working in the White House, by the way, because uh, that was in service of country. Uh, one of the reasons I got fired uh, was a fight that I had with him where I said, well, you know, I'm here to serve the American people. And he said, no, you're not. You're here to serve me. I said, well, you're here to serve the American people. You're living in the people's house. And this is the institution of the presidency. And just for the UK listeners, there's only one job in all of the United States that registered American voters all vote on together. That's the American presidency. All these other jobs in this republic are isolated to state or congressional district or local governmental officials. Only the presidency is where every American qualified to vote and registered gets the opportunity to vote. He didn't like that. And uh, 11 days after he hired me, I got fired. The mistakes you talk about making them, Mr. Scaramucci, do you see those same mistakes being made now by hundreds of millions of Americans, potentially, who have, despite everything that we've seen from Donald Trump, your former boss, continue to support him and are now backing his bid to re-enter the White House? Do you think they're making the same mistakes that you did? No, it's interesting. So it's not, thank, thank God it's not hundreds of millions because then, you know, he would win again. It was 75 million in 2020. Uh, I predict it'll be more than that in 2024, but still. You're right, not tens of millions, yeah. Yeah, no, still not enough to ascend to the presidency. But, you know, what I would what I would say to you is that uh, he has a hold on a very large group of people who feel left out of the system. And uh, these are the very same people that in your country voted against the European Economic Union in June of 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this feeling that, hey, I'm being left out. The system is not fair to me. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, justification for that, frankly. So my heart goes out to those people. You know, I grew up with those people. Uh, these are blue collar people in the country that have uh, uh, they had once felt like my dad did aspirational about the country, you know, sort of a blue collar aspirational existence here and people thinking about the American dream. Now those people are blue collar desperational and uh, they like Trump. They, they He represents them. He's an anger. He's almost like an orange wrecking ball uh, that they like seeing crashing into the institutions of the democracy, uh, the, uh, the media. You know, he wouldn't like you as an example. You're a member me? of the media. What have I done? Yeah, well, I mean, you I mean, he wouldn't like me because I think he's basically a narcissist and a sociopath. But, you know, yeah, well, that aside. Yeah, well, well, those are the reasons he wouldn't like you. <laughs> but the more generic version of you that you're a member of the media. Remember, he has said on microphones like yours and mine that he would persecute members of the media using the Department of Justice if they win against him. OK, that sounds like a Putin-esque yeah. type of a statement. He's also said 
they would cut their FCC or their communications licenses. Uh, he's made it very clear that he'd go after his political adversaries using the Department of Justice. Um, these are things that we have to take seriously now. If I didn't take it seriously or shrugged it off in 2016, uh, I'm working against my own business interests to talk about it today because, you know, half the people in the country still like him. Uh, it's a turnoff for somebody like me that runs an asset management company uh, for a lot of people say, hey, I can't give that guy money. I like Trump. He doesn't. Uh, there's a lot of people that stay apolitical for that reason. But listen, you know, I love my country and I'm a patriot first and certainly a partisan second. And I will work over the next eight months to defeat him uh, because he's a danger to what your country and our country represent in the global society. These liberal democracies, and I mean the word liberal in terms of freedom, mm -hmm. the liberality of freedom, not necessarily the political designation sure. of but but you think Donald Trump is a, is a threat to Western democracy is what you're saying? There's, there's no there's no question about that. And if you don't believe me, try to get Mark Meadows on the show, although he won't talk to you. He's his former White House chief of staff. Uh, Mark is not a Soros sponsored D.A. and all this uh, Republican MAGA talking point nonsense. He is a white Southerner who ran the Freedom Caucus in the House. And was a very conservative man. You know, he claims Trump is on tape fomenting the insurrection. He's the chief witness for the prosecution. And that trial set to start in July, assuming that the Supreme Court doesn't give Donald Trump absolute immunity. And of course, if they give Donald Trump absolute immunity, they're revoking, you know, 250 years of the American experiment and 220 or 240 years of the American Constitution. So I don't I don't predict he'll do that, but you you make no doubt about what I am saying because I saw it up close and real patriotic Americans, 38 of the 39 cabinet members and sub cabinet members have renounced him, denounced him. Mm -hmm. I think you're, you're only left with uh, Flynn, who was on the job for 23 days, and I think Ben Carson is still supporting him, but whether it's Kelly, McMaster, Mattis... You pick the person, Mark Esper, former Secretary of Defense. Uh, they want nothing to do with him. Uh, and I would say to people that are uh, right-leaning, uh, we can go with some bad policy. If you don't like Joe Biden's policies, I'm willing to tolerate that to prevent the destruction of the institutions of our democracy. You as a Republican would rather see Joe Biden stay in office than Donald Trump no, re into the White no, House. No question. And, and by the way, Mitt Romney was interviewed Last week on CNN, he made that clear as well. Yeah. Kissinger, is, Dick Cheney. Is that because I mean, is, is that because Donald Trump 1.0 was bad enough, Mr. Scaramucci? But Donald Trump presidency 2.0 is going to be a hell of a lot worse in your in your view. Exponential. It's not going to be like one plus one equals two. You know, it's going to be an exponential. It's going to be a quantum leap into a disaster area. Let me just tick off a, a couple of quick points briefly. Number one. Disaster for the Middle East because he's a lapdog to Vladimir Putin. Uh, the Iranians have an OZ from Vladimir Putin because of the arms supplies into the Ukrainian war and also the fact that they're selling his oil on the black market. Mr. Trump is a lapdog for Putin. Remember, the Iranians have stated in their constitution that they want to export their revolution. That is a 44-year chant coming from their constitution and if you just diagram the Middle East geopolitically, you see the proxy wars that they're fomenting everywhere. Just imagine Donald Trump disengaging from the Middle East and the terror that will cause there and the upset to the oil markets. So that's number one. Number two, he wants to revoke NATO. Uh, he's made that very clear to everybody. Ask John Bolton or Esper or Mattis. Uh, he told uh, Vladimir Putin last week at a campaign stop, you know, hey, uh, if they're not paying their fair share, do what you no want. problem with me. Yep. Go, go yep. in there and invade them. This is an absolute absurd statement. It's un-American. It's un-Western. It doesn't not only lacks patriotism, it's on the verge of treason. And so for all of these reasons, he will lose that election. Um, you know, there's a, you remember, there's a little bit of uh, fluff and emotion in the polling right now. Uh, these polls really don't matter. Michael Dukakis, I'm old enough to remember him. 
1988, March of 88, 10 points ahead of George Herbert Walker Bush. In July of 1988, he was 22 points ahead of Bush, but he didn't. The so, only so vote that matters or the only poll that matters is on election is, day. Is in November. Of, uh, you, what you're saying, Mr. Scaramucci, is um, I, I'm asking you honestly, do you think Donald okay. Trump will win? You know, I appreciate your formality, but you can call me Anthony. You know, we're, we're getting Thank to you. know each other. But, you, you know, I, I hear you. I hear well, the sort think, of concern well, in your gonna, voice. Do you no, think, I think he's going to get I think he's going to get schmeisted again. Really? You mark my words. Hopefully you'll invite me back in October back. when you when you see the reality of what will happen. Uh, it looks good for him right now because he's winning a few primaries. But there are two things happening underneath the data that your viewers and listeners should really focus on. Number one, he's not getting the crossover vote from Nikki Haley. Uh, if you went to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, you're even hearing the early whispers tonight in Super Tuesday. Uh, I voted for Nikki Haley. Would you vote for Donald Trump? Upcoming 40 percent of the respondents on average are saying no. Mm. So it's a mathematical impossibility. Nominees need the crossover vote. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, she didn't get it from Bernie Sanders. However, Hillary Clinton voters crossed over and voted for Barack Obama in 08. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm telling you right now, there will be a movement this fall of people, particularly suburban housewives who were disgusted by Donald Trump, uh, to stop him stop the, on stop, election stop day. Stop him becoming president once again. We've talked about what he might do. We've talked about some of his policies, Anthony. What, what, you've worked with him. You know him. How would you describe Donald Trump as a, as a person, as a man? No, he, he, you know, listen, I mean, he's an objectifier. So, you know, he's not a racist. So, you know, if you don't take people as people and you have no empathy for them, you're genuinely not racist. It's not like a KKK member goes outside and kicks a black car and pets a white car. They don't do that. They're they're objects in their field of vision. And so Mr. Trump is has sociopathic tendencies. He doesn't take anybody seriously. He has no friends. What he has is legions of alliances. Uh, and it's quite interesting to see because uh, people have gotten on and off the Trump train over the course of his career. And by the way, and this does not reflect well on me, I joined that Trump train mm -hmm. and I said to myself, oh, all right, you know, he's a little eccentric, but I'll be able to. You helped to put him there. No question. I have to own that for the rest of my life. And so. And so that's what's happening right now. There's a group of people, this woman, Elise uh, Stefanik, as an example, uh, she's in the House of Representatives. She represents a area of my state, the state of New York. She's trying to tell people that she would have, I guess, instated him into the presidency if she were Mike Pence. That's a signal to Trump that she would be a good vice presidential candidate. That's what candidate. she's after, isn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting, unprincipled cowardly thing to do so so yeah he's going to have a legion of people like her but he doesn't care about her he would run her over with a car if it served his interest and so uh, you ask me what he's like um can he be charming and gregarious he certainly can be uh can he be somebody uh he's a great messenger there's no question about that you have to be to ascend to the american presidency mm. He's also smarter than people give him credit for. He's got great political instincts. Uh, but what he really is, he's, he's there serving himself. And somebody has to uncover. It's unfortunate that John le Carre is, uh, has passed. <laughs> but somebody should uncover the linkage between him and Vladimir Putin, who, you know, listen, you know, listen to Macron, uh, Sunak, you pick the uh, MI5 guys, the Five Eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Russians want to reattach those former republics. Uh, he's been very, very clear about that. Uh, he told Obama, Putin did in 2014, I just want Crimea. I need access to that warm water port. We controlled it for 300 years. In a Neville Chamberlain-like way, they gave it to him. Uh, he said, no, that's, that's all I'm going to do. And lo and behold, he's moving on the rest of Ukraine. And they make up all this nonsense and they fill your social media and our social media with all these sound bites and nonsense. And then they have these useful idiots like Tucker Carlson, okay, who, you know, go over there and embarrass themselves 
with their sycophancy related to this this tyrant and the tyranny that he represents. I, just finally and briefly, if you would, Anthony, I asked I had Sebastian Gorka on the program earlier. I asked him if Donald Trump was an honest man, and he said, absolutely. I wonder yeah. if you share that assessment. Look, I worked with Sebastian in the White House, okay? He's a cipher, okay? Now, you know, if you can get him on, first of all, he would talk over me, by the way, because he would, he, he he would, be, like intellectual, he, he would be intellectually embarrassed, okay? But if you got him on, if you can get a debate with me and like Steve Bannon, or me and a guy like Sebastian Gorka, I would love that. Okay, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys can get that done, but so if Steve Bannon guys, will come on, you will come on and debate Steve Bannon live oh, on one hundred percent. He'll never try and make that happen. He will never do that. Okay, I've offered him money to do that. <laughs> he will never do that because I worked with him, and I understand the nature of his personality. I understand the mendacity. I understand what he's trying to do. In terms of the insularity of America, I, I've got his and Trump's worldview and, and the hurt they want to put on the rest of the world. You know, you need American political leaders that love America, but also love people and understand that we're all living here together. We're drinking the same water. We're breathing the same air. And we've got to make it work together. These guys don't want to do that. They want to close off America they want to wall it off literally and physically from the rest of the world. You can get Bannon on, my brother. I'll come any time of the day or night. <laughs> We're going to do no our best. If I'm, in a, if I'm in an igloo in Antarctica, I'll get a satellite phone to debate that SOB. Uh, but, I mean, the good news about him is that he'll never get anywhere near the White House again, thank God.